Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode, episode number 20 today for the Mexican Grand Prix in Season 1. If you guys did miss the previous one, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. But into this episode, we've got a maybe kind of important crossroads in terms of we're now at a point in the season where we're starting to save up a decent amount of cash, and yes, we've made a spec to upgrade, as you can see right here on screen. The chassis department has now been in this you know, kind of renovated, and it's now a bit of a fancier place now and that's really awesome it's good to see we're now making a move on the spec two parts but we've also now got to a stage where I'm remembering that we've also got this kind of teammate issue where Aiken's contract's coming up and if I'm being honest if we're wanting to make this step up the next step to challenging McLaren and Racing Point which are the next teams above us in the Constructors Championship and they're right now challenging Red Bull on track right now if we want to really contend for those points and actually get ourselves further up the table next season we might need to, you know, actually spend a decent amount of money on an actual good teammate compared to one of the F2 drivers. We've not spent any money on developing any of our uh, teammates so far. Schumacher and Aitken, we don't have anything on the personnel side of the HQ, which is maybe something to invest in. But because of that, there's no potential for our F2 driver or any of the F2 drivers that we sign. There's no potential for them to actually come in and be that decent uh, off the bat or to grow them quite rapidly because we don't have that personnel HQ. So there's not too much time to look at in terms of the activities there. Literally just two days, so I selected the sponsor event to get some extra acclaim. And what we're going to do instead is have a look and have a discussion at the uh, situation we're in. You can see we're, we're now building up a lot of money, and uh, we will continue to build that money if, as we try and get all the sponsor goals. Uh, and we've obviously chose sponsor goals that we can try and easily get. So we'll hopefully get, you know, one million bonus every single episode on top of the weekly income anyway of the sponsors. But You've got this kind of cobble of drivers here. Latifi down the bottom being the cheapest, and he's also the, the worst F1 driver that we can get. All the way up to just over 9 million there, 9.02 million. Sergio Perez, Landon Norris, Albon, and then a kind of middle tier, Russell, Grosjean, Stroll, Kafiat, Gassi, Ocon, Sainz, Magnussen, and Giovinazzi, all a little bit cheaper in a, in a kind of, you know, towards the bottom end there. But that's the kind of kind of small group that I feel like we could realistically look at. Like we could realistically save up to 9 million if we really wanted to. But the question is should we? You know, the question is now this crossroad of should we actually go and spend a decent amount of money here, save up a lot, and effectively not spend money on the HQs anymore, not build the car up anymore for a little bit for this last part of the season, and should we go and get and save enough money to get a better driver right at the end of the season, into season two, and also investing in the personnel to try and improve them because ultimately in this long-term plan if we want to win the constructors championship and if you look historically at the f1 games in the past there have been a few times where i've won the drivers championship but i have not won the constructors because my teammate uh, even when they're a good f1 driver has sometimes not just been pulling his weight here whereas on this game we cannot also train them as well so that will be something we have to look at as well so this is the vote that i want to give you guys as my board of directors another major vote here in this part of this season so go Going into next episode and the ones remaining, the only, there's only two to be fair, uh, remaining for this season. Should we spend some more money on the HQ, you know, upgrade, you know, go to tier two on the engine side? Because I'm a little bit also wary that we do need to improve the engine. You know, although we're the best Honda powered engine on the grid, um, you know, our engine power is still lacking compared to even McLaren with the Renault power. You know, but all the Ferrari guys, because obviously they've yet to be nerfed due to the season update not coming yet. Uh, so we do need to also invest in that kind of stuff. But at the same time... Like I just mentioned, all that kind of, you know, debate of at this point, is this a good transition? Maybe maybe now's the time. Early doors, transition over to getting a good F1 driver teammate, get that sorted, and then we can focus on the car later. So the vote is, do we save, 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 and basically spend no more money, literally nil pois, no, no dollars on the car, on the on the, on the HQs till we can sign a new teammate and actually maybe look to get an F1 driver as a teammate or do we continue to spend some money on the HQs and go just for an F2 teammate and try and sort out the teammate issue later down the line? Let me know in the vote. There'll be a straw poll in the description and also in the comments below. But you saw there just in the background whilst I was talking about that, just looking through the aero side and the powertrain side, you know, 5 million, we've got 5 million right there. So we could buy this and, and the upgrade would be done quite quickly as well. And we could get a move on on spec two on the engine side and the aero side. But at the same time, 
you know, Aitken's not scored any points. Schumacher's not scored any points. I'm over here scoring at least, you know, P8 to P10 every single race now quite consistently. If our teammate was doing that, you know, if my teammate had my points in the championship, we would be just about where McLaren and Racing Point are. We'd be trying to challenge them, the constructors. And ultimately, that is where I want to be, at least personally in season two. I don't know about you guys. That's where I want to be for this career mode season. I want to be challenging now Racing Point and McLaren. And I have a real big hunt, Red Bull, you know. They've been struggling for race pace so much lately. I think with the R&D reset, they could be in trouble. And so next season, I think we have a good shot at really taking the fight to Racing Point McLaren and Red Bull for that P3 slot let alone P2, and we don't even know. Maybe Fryer and Mercedes might be hampered with their R&D regs. You just don't know with regulation change how much these AI teams have say for R&D. So food for thought and uh, potentially a very important vote, really, because... It's a, it's a lot of money to blow on a teammate, you know? Nine million is a lot for a teammate. Even if we got Giovinazzi or, you know, one of the lower drivers, that's still six million to seven million spent. So that's still a decent amount of money uh, that could be put towards an HQ. So... Yeah, vote away, my board directors, and uh, we'll come back to that next episode or maybe the one after that and see how things are, are shaping up for you, your guys' thoughts. But it's now time for us to move then into the Mexican Grand Prix race weekend qualifying here. And I'm looking forward to this one. I've really grown to love the Mexican GP circuit. I initially, when it first came to the F1 games, when it came back to F1, I really did not gel with it. But I've gotten used to it more and more. Last year's game really found it quite enjoyable. And I think our car is going to go pretty well around here. It's a very flat circuit. It's obviously got a lot of character to it, but it is very flat, and we went really well at Russia, and just generally a lot of flat circuits we go well at, because there's maybe not that challenge, that added pressure of having to have a lot of downforce uh, to like, navigate all the high-speed corners, and also at the same time here at Mexico, there's that compromise, but you've also got the added case of, you know, it's higher up in altitude, so you actually have to, you can actually run lower aero, because the air is thinner as well, so the compromise isn't as bad, and just generally speaking, I think the car is suited for the, for the this track because I can lower the wings a little bit and still have decent enough aero for sector one and then you've oh sector two rather and then sector one and three it's uh, or one rather it's mostly all about power sector three is as well still quite a lot about the cornering and our car's pretty good at it and we make it through into Q2 you can see Aitken unfortunately does not but uh, it is very tight on the R&D actually going into this uh, episode Alfa Romeo have upgraded further which I was surprised at because it looks like every other car is plateauing because they're saving R&D points for the regulation change but Alfa Romeo upgraded again and they re overtook us in the R&D chart even though pretty much we're all like on the same pixel on the R&D graph but I was happy we made it through into Q2 uh, and that kind of showed me that again yeah this will be kind of maybe like uh, one of those uh, episodes where our car is actually going really well at least in the hands of me obviously our teammates going to be a lot worse than us every single time just due to the stat difference there but uh, looking happy to be here in Q2 and we actually made it through uh, with one lap so I have two runs to do in this Q2 session to try and make an impression unfortunately the first run wasn't that great. Pretty much, I think we actually matched our Q1 time there. So we have to try and do better as the track also gets a bit faster as well. We do find the time in sector one, about three tenths there on the exit of that corner, about five tenths going into the stadium section, then trying to just rotate the car as best we can. This was the only bad part of the circuit for me, was the car felt very stiff th th through this entire sector. So that's something that hopefully is not going to hamper us too much in the race, but it was just hard to get the car rotated round. But we come through across the line, do improve by about five tenths there. And that's enough to get us up into P14 qualified. Remember, we were, I think we got given P14 or P15 last episode due to three grid penalties. This time we've actually qualified there, so I'm happy about that, that we've actually legit qualified here. And it was quite tight, and I was surprised at a few people, especially Ricardo and Ocon to be fair as well, but Ricardo up into Q3, uh, Ocon as well, but Ricardo's way up there beating uh, Mercedes car Bottas on the same set of tyres. So I don't know what's that about, and also it looks like Verstappen at least has navigated his Red Bull a bit better, but Albon gets knocked out again in Q2 too, so they're definitely on the back foot, but a few little surprises there, mainly Ricardo. he's our rival, remember, and he's up in P4, so that's a little bit worrying, we got lucky because he DNF last race, I think it was, so we got a load of our rivalry points on him, but if he's up there in P4 in the race, that's going to be a bit of a worry for us, but uh, happy with our grid slot, looking forward to the race, uh, I think the tire wear is quite high around here anyway, so it's, I think, going to be a two-stop, so that'll be quite fun for us again, so let's go to Sunday and see how we do. Here we go then, it's time to race in Mexico City, a place which gave Honda their first ever victory back in 1965. American Richie Ginther won from third on the grid, 
And what are the Honda-powered cars this year? Well, Red Bull have been going strong here in recent seasons, so can they keep that record going today? At 2,285 metres above sea level, the thin air of the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez poses a unique challenge, not just to a driver's skill, but to the efficiency of their engines as well. 17 corners make up a lap of this 2.6-mile circuit, and you can expect incredible speeds in excess of 220 miles per hour, and overtaking two into the hard-breaking zones of turns one and turn four. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. So, let's briefly discuss Lewis Hamilton. There's a real chance they could win the title today. So how do you think they'll handle the pressure? I think as long as they keep their mind on the task and not its historical significance, they'll be just fine. This is a race just like any other. You do the best you can and accept that sometimes things are going to happen outside of your control. If they can approach today with that attitude, the pressure shouldn't be a problem. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Sainz, Lando Norris and Perez. Hamilton, they've taken a grid penalty. Ricardo, Albon and Lance Stroll. Giovinazzi, the owner driver. Kimi Raikkonen and Kvyat. Magnussen, Verstappen. Roman Grosjean and Jack Aitken. Ocon, Russell, Latifi and Pierre Gasly picks up the final grid slot today. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? So with S-Men Ocon and Max Verstappen having grid penalties, you would have seen there with the grid sequence, we have been moved up into P12. So yet again, getting a little bit lucky here and we use that tactical, you know, very bad race we had at our home GP to take the engine penalties. And so it means we can capitalize on others being a little bit unfortunate at the end of this season. We've got a really good chance, I think, of some more points, but even maybe high ones, because if we can gain some positions, we'll already be in the top 10 by hopefully the end of lap one or two. Because if you look at the kind of track record against the AI this season on this game, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we'll be in a really good position to maybe capitalize on something and the strategy is also very promising I'm loving the look of this very aggressive strategy and once again love a good two stop medium tires to two sets of softs being very aggressive in the end of the race when we've got a lighter car lower fuel being on the fastest tire and starting on the mediums getting that out of the way first I think that's going to be a big big positive for us and if the tire wears anything like it was on last year's game at Mexico this will be a good shout because the tires do go off quite quickly when you're on heavy fuel on the softs and so by the time we get to like the first round of pit stops for everyone else around us if they're on soft tires ahead of us we're going to start to actually gain on them quite a lot because that's how badly the tires do go off around here and how hard it is to navigate that sector too especially with worn tires so looking forward to this one i like this uh, vibe i'll have a good feeling about this race let's get into it it's the third last race of the season around number 20 here at the mexican grand prix as we go to five red lights and we are underway and it's a very slow start for the man on hard tires there alongside us giovanazzi bogging down we use plenty of ERS here on the exit of the fiery lights to try and get a good run. It's a very long run to turn one, so you have some time to think about where you're going to place the car. But also, I don't actually know because there's so many cars ahead of us. And uh, behind us, the Alpha dives in there, steaming, and hits the rear end and breaks his front wing. Albin's been pinched by Stroll. We go around the outside. It's three wide through that right-hander. Don't get the exit on the curb. We really get caught up there. That that, that curb is very 3D-like on this, on this year's game. I think it was a lot more flatter on last year's one, so I kind of got a lot of wheel spin there trying to go around the outside of Stroll but we tried again then on the outside of the Canadian and this time second time lucky trying to overtake the man in the racing point car uh, on the outside of the double right hand in the kind of mini stadium section if you will before the main main stadium section in sector three but we get the job done so a good opening lap there overtaking Albin obviously we got help by Stroll pinching him into that corner but uh, still have to be opportunistic about finding the space but as we move on to lap number three then DRS available now so we've gone through lap two nothing was uh, happening on that on that lap but now Stroll coming back us not with DRS but just purely with the engine power and I'm, I'm sure using a lot of ERS but at this stage you can see on the bottom right I didn't you really fight him that much I was in standard mixture didn't use too much ERS either because there's no point fighting him now at this point in the Grand Prix because right now what I just need to do is 
hold station with them. I need to keep up with them and wait for their tire wear to kick in. And then that is where I can make some moves potentially. And also, the racing point car is technically faster than us. So I wasn't too surprised he was going to close back up to us. We've got opportunistic overtaking Stroll. Uh, even though, obviously, in the past, we've been able to get him at the end of the Grand Prix. But that's a long way to go. Still many, many laps to go. So for now, we sit tight and just wait for that tire wear to kick in. And it will start to kick in around lap number seven here now. Really closing up rapidly to Stroll now in sector three on this lap. So the laps are gone by. And we're only maybe, I think, two laps away from the first round of pit stops potentially happening for some of these AI cars, depending on how they feel their tire wear is on each individual car, obviously, because obviously some of these teams, they have been going longer on their stints compared to others uh, over this course of the season. But either way, for sure, all of these guys are past the halfway point of their stints, and they're going to start feeling that tire wear, and I am not feeling it quite yet on these mediums. So a long while to go for me, and so now we're going to go for a darting pass to the inside of turn one. Oh, it's so supremely close there. Lock up on the front right, little bit of a rubbing on uh, Stroll side pod that we make it work. It was a really nice pass actually, nice battling to be fair to Stroll to pinch me and try his best to keep it through. But in the end, the tire wear is clearly there. And lap nine, you can see, I mean, look how easy we're going to make this on Sergio Perez. Squeeze him out. I mean, Perez has been so good in the racing point car and has been so quick, but literally that was so easy to make because the tire wear is now really hampering them ahead of us. Ricardo as well, our rival, he's going to come in on this lap here, lap nine, which I actually thought was quite surprising early then. So Ricardo's in as well as Vettel. Uh, I think that was Norris as well. And the McLaren in for his first pit stop there. So lap nine. So those worn tyres that they had to start on. Well, most of them had to start on because they qualified into Q3. They only go nine laps. That's maybe something to keep an eye on for ourselves as well at the end of this race. Because I only have one fresh set of soft tyres which I'll put on. Uh, on our first pit stop and then the second set of softs I have are going to be worn ones so if I can make sure I'm trying to minimize the amount of laps I do on that last set of softs that'll be quite useful for me in terms of just not wanting to have that same tire wear so now we come through and uh, Sainz is out of this Grand Prix so that's one free position we'll get because Sainz was ahead of us both McLarens were in the top 10 so we're going to gain one free position so it should be us floating around P7 then once we make that first pit stop but at the moment we're in first place it's the first time I think ever in this season so far that I've actually been leading a Grand Prix in any in any kind of circumstance. Of course, I'm yet to pit, but it's still, you know, leading a Grand Prix in some kind of shape and form. This is, I think, the first time we've done it. So that's quite a nice feeling, to be fair, as well. And uh, hopefully we can return to this kind of feeling, you know, <laughs> within the season or two, maybe, I hope. Obviously, we're still even yet to get on a podium this uh, this year. But uh, we're finally now going to come in for that first pit stop. So we've gone quite a long way here, lap 15. So, no, not quite halfway, but 36 laps. So pretty much near enough halfway. And now it's all going to be soft tyres so and the Grand Prix. One new set right now, then an older set. But this uh, this first set is going to feel pretty damn amazing compared to these guys. Because remember, they're also out. They're not only on a different set of tyres. They're also out of sync of my pit stop now. So even though some of these guys, a lot of them are on a set of soft tyres as well. Like we're on the same compound, but they've been on them now for a good seven laps already um, or more or a little bit less depending on who, who they are and when they pit in so we come out in P10 so not quite the P7 I thought we'd be around but we've got an Alpha Tauri a Haas that we can definitely pass that we should be faster than and already I can tell that Kafia I mean look at that wobble on the rear end Kafia is already feeling that tyre wear and they're only like three laps away from making a second pit stop so this is where we can have some fun and just try and rapidly overtake them but it's going to be quite difficult in sector 2 have to try and navigate around the outside delicate stuff here on the outside of the Russian but we get the job done into the next right hand to Kafiat with a dive to be fair he tries to put up a good fight but on the exit supremely no match for him under traction bit of ERS use into sector 2 the heart of it now the left the right then the left again and then this is where we lift off a little bit then plant the power and just stay flat out through there and we're going to get DRS open, bit of ERS use as well, not even in rich mix there, but just flying past the Haas of Kevin Magnussen, now closing up to Sergio Perez and Daniel Ricciardo in P7 and 6 respectively, so we're already in P8, I can see up to P6 in sight as we go trying to go dancing around the outside of Perez, doesn't quite work there on the outside, but now can we try and switch that, and yes we can, and look at this, this is going to be so satisfying, use overtake mode around the outside of this, such a tricky left-hander, it's so far on the left hand side of our car but we get it done you don't know how satisfying that was to get that done on Perez and yet again we can't overtake Ricardo on track because he comes in he's kind of scared he he's, he's a coward he's backing out fighting us on track here every single time so hopefully I can actually get the satisfaction over to overtake him on track because I feel like we do have the pace to get that other position and being up in a very lofty P6 as it would stand uh, before the end of the Grand Prix but now 
On lap 20, Ricardo is out of the Grand Prix. So he has another retirement. That's his second retirement in like the last four races here. So that's going to be a massive win for us in terms of that'll be another kind of four rivalry points on him. But this is how and where he was uh, retiring. And in sector two, the car just shuts off, I guess, with the mechanical failure. Aitken getting held up there, our teammate. And he goes through. So a little bit annoying there for our teammate being held up by a few fair few seconds. But Ricardo pulls up then. And it's just a straight up mechanical failure. Not an engine one, I don't know. It's just mechanical or something sort retiring at the Grand Prix so a bit of a shame for him but a massive plus for us in terms of not only for the rivalry but also remember that battle we're in with Alpha Tauri and Renault that's going to be a massive plus to maintain the position we are in in the Constructors Championship as we now move through into lap 21 and we're all of the back of Lando Norris the McLaren he's on medium tyres but he's been on them for a fair few laps now and my softs are still pretty fresh at this stage of the GP opening DRS using a lot of ERS though because remember this McLaren is the second fast this car in a straight line on the grid right now in terms of engine, raw engine power so we had to use a lot to get past him there to be fair but in the corners I had him because the tyre wear was just so bad for him and uh, now we're down to lean mix to try and save some fuel for the later on in this Grand Prix because I feel like the last stint is going to be a massive power move of trying to use all the fuel all the ERS so I want to try and save some fuel for that we come through now to lap 27 uh, Leclerc right up my chuck he's the one that's going to take the lead of the Mexican Grand Prix which will be quite crucial for the AI championship battle. Remember, Hamilton leads the way. He's had two wins on the trot, but Leclerc, if he goes on to win this, he'll be right back in the championship fight. So this championship fight of ours in uh, with the AI are going to go right down to the wire, I think, between Leclerc's Ferrari and Hamilton's Mercedes, but we now are in and out of our pit box. Bit of a slow pit stop, to be fair. Three seconds, quite slow, but we're out on another set of soft tyres worn set so that's why we've tried to minimize the number of number of laps we're doing we're out on lap 28 so literally we're only doing eight laps on this set of tires but that will hopefully allow us to try and close up to these guys ahead of us speaking of Sergio Perez here and then literally go flying and then by the time we get to the end of the Grand Prix the tire wear that is going to be there won't be too horrendous like it was for these guys at the very start of the race but here on towards lap number 29 there's a lot of clean air ahead of Perez to the next car which is Norris and we're going to get a lovely uh, a slingshot effect here of basically he's going to pull us along. We're going a lot faster than we usually would be with ERS, DRS and Rich Mix. So I thought on this lap, you know what, let's Banzai this. I want to try and get a fast lap of the Grand Prix. This So far, we've not got a podium this season, not got anywhere near a win, but we've not even had a fast lap ever, which sometimes a lot of time you do get a lot of satisfaction in. And obviously it's one extra point for us. So let's have our Lando Norris moment here in the F1 game and let's use overtake mode all the time in this entire lap and try and close up that gap to not only Norris, look at that, Stroll is ahead, Stroll's done absolutely a bit of a madness there, I don't know how he's got ahead of uh, his, what his teammate, but also Norris there because Stroll's really not been that great in the last few episodes uh, that we've raced him, so we've actually maybe got two positions to get in this race because I definitely think we can get uh, Stroll on hard tyres and at the moment Norris is being held up by the Canadian and you can see we are absolutely flying here purple first sector, it's going to be a purple second sector using a lot of ERA to the point where here, look at the bottom right, we actually use so much overtake mode that I cannot no longer deploy any because even the automatic deployment has run out of deployment of what we can actually do for this lap here. It has to be reset on the next one. We understeer like crazy in the last sector, use all the fuel. We're now negative fuel, but there we go. Green last sector. It doesn't matter though. That's enough to get us the fastest lap of this Grand Prix. And the thing is, I'm the only car, I'm pretty sure, maybe a couple maybe my teammate as well but I'm the only top car here in the top 10 that is on a set of soft tyres on this low fuel so probably there's a good chance I will keep that fast up the Grand Prix which will be exquisite like that lap apart from the last corner felt really awesome for the first time I was like this car is actually really good I was actually loving driving it compared to the other cars because we were really gaining on Stroll I mean you can see we've gained so much on Stroll and Norris here because they went side by side in uh, into sector 1 of this lap 30 so it's now time to try and do the business and get two more positions positions we could be looking at a very nice p5 here in this grand prix we did the engine temp saving in sectors two and three with lean mixture now back up into rich drs open there not deploying ers though uh, at the later stages because the strolls just a little bit slow there even with drs actually i was surprised how quick i was gaining to the canadian we go side by side to be fair once again stroll tries to put up a fight in the opening turns but unable to do it and so we're up into p6 norris now he'll be a little bit more difficult to overtake one he's on medium so his tire is not as bad and he's not 
not on a slow tyre like the hards or with Stroll. But also, you can see in a straight line, I'm not gaining that much with DRS. That McLaren is very rapid again. And so we're saving fuel with lean mixture right now. And I'm basically not going to, I'm not going to deploy too much DRS around the lap. I need to try and save enough to basically use it as a nice double whammy. But I'm trying to close up here with some ERS and DRS. And then pretty much for the rest of this entire lap, I'll just be in lean mixture, not use any ERS mode and just save it for that final exit off the corner. Because one also, the McLaren is not bad in the straight line, but also that last corner, he keeps getting a great exit. But now, this is a perfect excuse to save fuel and ERS here. Lap 32, virtual safety cars out. It ends at the end of the lap. I don't know why it came out, though. I never uh, knew or found the reason why. I'm sure there was just uh, someone parked up there, maybe retiring or just some sort of incident that cleared quite quickly. As we now go racing again, we've got uh, four laps to go in this Grand Prix, using some ERS to catch up because we were a little bit slow off that last corner. DRS open, but again, it's not going to be enough this time round. And we're going to have to wait patiently until the very next lap. But now we get a good exit finally. DRS is going to be open once we can. ERS deploying pretty much down to literally 2% there on the bottom right. Rich mix. And we're gaining slowly. And just at the end of this straight, we'll get enough to go on the outside as Norris goes defensive to the inside of this circuit. Easy does it. Tiptoeing there, leaving some room on the inside. But we get the job done on that 34 up into P5. And now we look to try and consolidate this position there. But what a race this has been. So much fun. Again, you know, this is why I love a two-stop. You know, it, it just, it's just better. It's just a lot more fun. There's a bit more of a strategic element. The one-stops... It's just a bit dull. I really do not enjoy the fact that most of the time we've got these kind of annoying Pirelli races where they've made the heart, they made the tyre choices way too hard and it's too conservative. But anyway, I digress. That's not the point. We come through with a very fun Mexican GP, but also a great one for us. P5. What a finishing position for us there. That was a really solid race. We had great pace as well. Like I said, enjoying the car and our very first fastest lap of the Grand Prix ever in our career so far. Leclerc, though, wins it. That'll be a big one for the championship for the AI battle as well. It's victory in Mexico then, and what a victory it is after an incredible Grand Prix. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. Here we are. It was a 1-2 for Ferrari, actually. So that's quite a big deal then for them. A Hamilton P3, Bottas P4, us in P5, looking lovely. But if you actually look close enough, look at Aiken. He's finished up in P14, which I was surprised at. I think that's his highest, uh, my highest finishing position for a teammate so far in the season between Schumacher and him. And if you look at his fastest lap, if he probably didn't get held up by Ricardo, maybe things went his way, I don't know, if he qualified higher... He could have been quite good. He's beaten. Uh, obviously, we don't know his race pace overall, like every lap consistency. But on that one lap he did, he's been faster than all the guys ahead of him, pretty much. Like a load of, uh, you know, the, faster than the Red Bull car, Albin, um, you know, Alpha Tauri, the racing points there. So he's actually done quite well. And that shows the car has actually got better. It's really just a case of now that's maybe a big argument for maybe why we should go for a better teammate now. Because the car actually is there. I just need a, a better driver in the other car to. To be there with me to finish like in P6 behind me or P7 or whatever. So uh, yeah, that was a promising sign seeing that fastest lap from Aiken there, that, you know, compared to the other guys. But in terms of constructors, uh, we remain in P6 then, but it's a healthy now little lead we've got against Renault and AlphaTauri. So I feel a lot better in terms of, I think we've got this. I think we can, uh, you know, get this through to the end uh, to Abu Dhabi and finish in P6. So that'll be decent. And obviously then into season two, looking up ahead of us to McLaren and Racing Point. But we beat Ricardo by four counts on the rivalry there because he DNF'd at that Grand Prix. So we've now got a very healthy lead in that rivalry going into one remaining race next time out Brazil. So we should get that extra claim from him at beating him over the course of those races. We're going to get over $1 million once again for the bonus payouts there. And so that'll take our grand total to $8.44 million. So we're only a little bit away. Like literally at the start of next episode, actually, we could probably already afford a new teammate and probably save enough up to actually 
actually buy one HQ upgrade just maybe at the end of the season or going into season two at Melbourne. So, you know, I'm going to still let you guys vote. But actually, in the end, maybe the vote won't matter because we've actually done some great saving. We've been earning so much cash. We're actually in a really great position right now. I'm really happy that I was a bit scared, you know, when we weren't catching up as much. You know, around Silverstone, before all those upgrades, we were making progress. I was a little bit scared of, are we making enough progress for season two for where I personally want this car to be for the entire series? But now I'm, I'm happy where we are. We've actually got enough funding to do all the things we kind of want to do. So if you did enjoy that episode, though, really fun race in Mexico. Be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the cons below. If you are on your rounds here, then do get subscribed for weekly fall on content, guys. I have been Arava. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.